Here are 16 best diabetes foods to eat for people with diabetes, type 1 and type 2. Number 1. Eggs. The regular egg consumption may reduce the risk of heart disease in a variety of ways, guys. Eggs have been shown to reduce inflammation, improve insulin sensitivity, increase HDL, which is your good cholesterol levels, and change the size and shape of LDL, which is your bad cholesterol. According to a 2019 study, eating a high-fat, low-carb breakfast of eggs may help people with diabetes manage their blood sugar levels throughout the day. So have breakfast, have high-fat breakfast every morning. Previous research has linked egg consumption to heart disease in diabetics, but that's not true. However, a recent review of control studies discovered that eating 6 to 12 eggs per week as part of a nutritious diet for your diabetes did not increase the risk factors for heart disease in people with diabetes. There you go. Some research also indicated that eating eggs may lower risk of stroke. Hello everyone, if you are looking for exclusive deals, blogs, educational content every week delivered to your email, subscribe to our newsletter at sugarmds.com right now. Number two, greens with leaves. Now, green leafy vegetables are high in nutrients and low in calories. Ta-da! No surprise, right? But they're also low in digestible carbs or carbs absorbed by the body, so they won't affect blood sugar levels significantly. Now, many vitamins and minerals, including vitamin C, are found in spinach, kale, and some other leafy greens. According to some evidence, people with diabetes have lower vitamin C levels than people without diabetes, and they may require more vitamin C through the diet most of the time. Vitamin C is a powerful antioxidant and anti-inflammatory, okay? Increased consumption of vitamin C rich foods can actually help diabetics increase their serum vitamin C levels while decreasing the inflammation and the cellular damage. Number three, avocados. Avocados have less than one gram of sugar. There are very few carbohydrates. They have high fiber content and they're healthy fats. So they won't spike your blood sugar. Avocado consumption is also linked to a better overall healthy diet, good diet quality, as well as lower BMI. Yes, weight loss. Avocados are therefore an excellent snack for people with diabetes, especially since obesity increases the risk of developing diabetes, if you didn't have diabetes, that is still one of the best foods for pre-diabetics and insulin-resistant people. Okay, so it really helps prevent the diabetes. A 2019 mice study discovered that avocatin B, or AVOB, that's a fat molecule found only in avocados, inhibits the incomplete oxidation in your skeletal muscle and the pancreas, and as a result, lower your insulin resistance. Now, we know that more human research is needed when you're taking, you know, conclusions from the mice studies, but still, there's a lot of evidence to show that, that evidence that avocados can help diabetes prevention. Number four, legumes. I know not everybody agree with that, but beans are an inexpensive and nutritious, and they're extremely healthy, guys. So beans are a legume that is typically high in B vitamins, which you need, minerals like calcium, potassium, magnesium, and fiber, which almost all diabetics need that in abundance. They also have a very low glycemic index, right, which is essential for your diabetes management. Now, beans may also help in what? The diabetes prevention. So if you're pre-diabetic or insulin resistant, also eat beans in moderation, of course. In a study involving over 3,000 participants at high risk for cardiovascular disease, those people who consumed legumes had a lower risk of developing type 2 diabetes. Number five is chia seeds. Now, diabetic patients will really love chia seeds if they try it, right? They are high in fiber and they are very low in digestible carbohydrates. In fact, 11 of the 12 grams of carbs in a 28 gram serving of chia seed fiber has no effect on your blood sugar levels. Now, fiber can actually lower your blood sugar levels by how does the fiber do that? By slowing the rate at which food moves through your gut and the way it's absorbed. Now, chia seeds can help you maintain a healthy weight because fiber curbs hunger and makes you feel full. Chia seeds may also 
help in the maintenance of your glucose control all day long if you had it for breakfast. A study of 77 adults with overweight, obese, type 3 diabetics, they discovered that eating chia seeds promotes weight loss and helps maintain your glycemic control. Chia seeds have also been shown to help lower blood pressure and inflammation markers. Number six on the list is oily fish. What are they? Salmon, which most people love, sardines, herring, anchovies, and very little people love, and mackerel. Uh, some people love that too. They're high in omega-3 fatty acids, DHA, EPA. They're beneficial to your health, especially when you have diabetes, right? So I would say eat wild-caught salmon uh, or farm salmon even if you know where they come from, if you know the farm, etc. Now, getting enough of these fats on a regular basis is especially important for diabetics because, you know, they are predisposed to heart disease and stroke. Now, DHA and EPA protect your cells that line your blood vessels, your endothelial cells, and reduce the inflammation in there and may help improve the arterial function. According to a lot of research, people who eat fatty fish on a regular basis have a lower risk of acute coronary events, which is your heart attacks and your strokes. They're less likely to die from heart disease, even cancer. Again, eating fatty fish may even help your blood sugar regulation just eating fish without changing anything. Now, a study of 68 adults with you know, with uh, weight problems or obesity. In that study, they discovered that people who consumed fatty fish, they had significantly lower post-meal blood sugar spikes than those people who did not consume fish or did not like fish. Now, fish also a great source of a high quality protein, which keeps you full and helps to keep your blood sugar levels stable, at least, I will say, five to eight hours after. Number seven is Greek yogurt. Now, a long-term study, that actually involved health data over 100,000 participants. They discovered that eating yogurt, especially Greek yogurt, on a daily basis was associated with an 18% lower risk of developing type 2 diabetes, but it also can assist you in losing weight and keeping your blood sugar levels stable because of high protein and high fat content. Now, yogurt and other dairy foods may help people with type 2 diabetes lose weight and, you know, of course, improve the internal fat composition, the visceral fat. Now, uh, yogurt also is what? They're high in calcium, right? High in protein, as we discussed. And there is a type of fat called conjugated linoleic acid that can actually make you feel fuller and longer. Now, Greek yogurt has six to eight grams of carbs per serving, which is way lower than the regular yogurt. So pay attention that you're actually eating a Greek yogurt. Again, Greek yogurt is high in protein, so it will help you with the weight loss and, and try to go with the full fat. I don't really care if, you know, if you're not trying to lose weight, you can go for full fat. Now, nuts are the next. They're tasty, nutritious. Everybody loves them unless you have allergies to it. And majority of the nuts contain fiber and they're low in net carbs, as you know, and some contain less carbs than the others. Now, regular consumption of variety of nuts, and I think my favorite nut is walnut and almonds, they have been shown to reduce inflammation and lower blood sugar levels and A1C levels, which is a long-term three-month uh, marker for, a, uh, for a blood sugar management. They even lower your LDL, which is your bad cholesterol. Now, nuts may also help diabetics to improve their overall health because it helps with the LDL, right? So in a study in 2019, 16 people with type 2 diabetes involved and they were eating, you know, tree nuts like walnuts and almonds and hazelnuts and pistachios. I love that too. Those people actually in that study, when they ate those nuts, they had a much lower risk of cardiovascular disease, heart attacks and strokes. And of course, it was going to help your blood sugar levels if you're consuming nuts uh, as a snack, for example. Now, uh, another study with type 2 diabetes, when people consumed walnut oil on a regular basis, even that helped the blood sugar levels. Well, that's really important because, you know, with the type 2 diabetes, you uh, frequently have insulin spikes or blood sugar spikes, and uh, you're always looking for something to snack on. I think nuts will be your best friend. Now, broccoli is your number nine. Why is broccoli so important? Well, because it's the most nutrient-dense vegetables pretty much on the earth, okay? A half cup of cooked broccoli contains only 27 calories, my friend, and only three grams of digestible carbs. So you can eat as much as you want, as well as like there's vitamin C and magnesium in there, which is super important for your diabetes. Now, broccoli may help with the blood sugar management for those reasons. Now, one study discovered that eating broccoli sprouts 
literally reduce your blood sugar level. So if you didn't know that the food is medicine, there you go. Broccoli, you can use it as a medicine, eat every evening with your regular meat, with some meat dish or whatever, it's going to help you with your blood sugar levels. Now, how this vegetable actually helps as a medicine? Because there's actually things that are, there's some chemicals in there, like sulforaphane, for example. They're found in cruciferous vegetables, such as broccoli and sprouts and so forth. Next one is gonna be extra virgin olive oil. Extra virgin olive oil contains something very important. It's called oleic acid. It's a type of monounsaturated fat, has antioxidant properties, and it literally improves your glycemic control just like a medicine. And it improves your not only your fasting, but also post-meal blood sugar and even triglyceride levels. That's again important for people with diabetes because, you know, they're the one having difficulty with their blood sugar levels and the triglyceride levels most of the time at the same time. Now, what else oleic acid does? It actually stimulates a GLP-1 hormone, which is actually now used as a medicine. So you can use olive oil as a medicine to improve your GLP-1 function. Okay, so you don't have to necessarily take a medicine to do that. If you need a medicine, you need a medicine. I'm not saying don't take medicine, but you can use these foods for medicinal purposes. For example, in a large meta-analysis of 32 studies examining various parts of fat, olive oil was the only one found to reduce the heart disease. Remember that. Polyphenols, which are antioxidants, are also abundant in olive oil. Now, what does polyphenols do? Well, they reduce inflammation. They protect the cells lining your blood vessels. Again, they protect you against the LDL cholesterol or oxidation of the LDL cholesterol. And it also even helps lower your blood pressure. Because extra virgin olive oil is unrefined, it retains antioxidants and other beneficial features. If you are trying to choose which olive oil you want to go for, go for the extra virgin olive oil from a reputable source. Again, as many olive oils are, most of them are blended with cheaper oils such as corn or soy oil, so pay attention to that. Number 11 is flax seeds. Now, flax seeds are known as common flax or, or linseeds or whatever you call it, but they are high in heart healthy omega-3 fats and fiber and other unique plant compounds. Lignans, for example, which make up a portion of their insoluble fiber, may actually help reduce the risk of heart disease, which most diabetics die from, and it actually help improve blood sugar management as well. Now, they did a review of 25 randomized trials. They discovered a significant link between the whole flaxseed supplementation and glucose reduction. Here you go, another medicinal food for you. Now, flax seeds may even help with your blood pressure reduction, which is almost as important as lowering your blood sugar. In 2000 study, in a study with pre-diabetics, for example, consuming flax seed powder on a daily basis reduced their blood pressure and improved their glycemic control and insulin resistance as well. Again, don't expect this to happen overnight, but if you're having in your diet for a while, you're gonna see that. We need more studies for prevention of diabetes, but initial studies are indicating that the flax seeds are really good for your heart, for your gut, and for your diabetes. Again, flax seeds contain a high amount of viscous fiber, which improves your gut health, insulin sensitivity, and feelings of fullness, which most of you, I'm sure, will like it, right? Vinegar or apple cider vinegar. So that's also a known topic, but I'll explain a little bit. Uh, both apple cider vinegar and regular vinegar actually have a lot of benefits, not just lowering your blood sugar levels. Despite the fact that it is made from apples, the sugar in the fruit is fermented into acetic acid. So the finished product has actually less than one gram of carbs per tablespoon. Now, data studies, of course, bunch of studies, and the meta-analysis of these six studies involving over 300 people with type 2 diabetes found that the vinegar actually improves fasting blood sugar levels and eventually improves your A1C levels as well. Now, other health benefits of apple cider vinegar include, but not limited to, antimicrobial and antioxidant properties. And then we know that we need more research on this. Uh, you can do more research definitely for this, but we have a lot of benefits already proven. Now, start with, uh, I will say, two teaspoons of mix in a glass of water, which each meal incorporate apple cider vinegar into your diet. We are coming up with our own apple cider vinegar gummies, which is easier to consume. Uh, but if you want to consume uh, real vinegar, then you may want to really dilute it and put some maybe uh, lemon juice or something to make it more palatable. 
I typically use it on my salads for most of my salads. Number 13 is our berries, strawberries, blackberries, blueberries. Okay, strawberries are they're high in anthocyanins, which are antioxidants that give them that red color. So if you're seeing a fruit that's colorful, go for it, okay? Polyphenols are beneficial plant compounds with antioxidant properties that are present in these berries. In 2017, a study discovered that consuming polyphenols from strawberries and, and cranberries for six weeks actually improved the insulin sensitivity in adults with overweight issues or, or obesity issues, even when they did not have diabetes. Well, that's really important because the insulin sensitivity or insulin resistance is a major issue that ends up causing the diabetes down the road. And sometimes some people even end up with heart attack before they become diabetic due to insulin resistance. Now, a cup of strawberries contain only 53 calories, 12 grams of carbohydrates, and three of that uh, is basically fiber. Now, uh, this one serving also contains more than 100% of the recommended daily intake of vitamin C. There you go. Just have some strawberries and you're good. Again, some additional anti-inflammatory properties as well. Now, of course, we're going to talk about garlic, right? That's number 14. Garlic is incredibly nutritious considering it is small size and low calorie count, right? So again, garlic has been shown in many studies to help your glucose management, your cholesterol regulation, and even your blood pressure management. One clove of garlic weighs around three grams. That's it. Number 15 is squash. Well, a lot of people love squash, which is good, right? There are a lot of varieties of the squash, of course, but it's one of the healthiest vegetables available. Now, it is dense. It is a fling food. Uh, it will fill you up and typically has low glycemic index and, and fairly low calories. Now, acorn, pumpkin, and butternut squashes are uh, winter varieties with a hard shell, as you know. And there is a summer squash that has a soft peel that is uh, edible. Zucchini and Italian squash are, for example, our most common varieties when it comes to that. And squash, like most vegetables, they're high in antioxidants. Squash also contains less sugar than sweet potatoes. So you can actually replace that instead of sweet potatoes, right? It's an excellent substitute. Now, pumpkin polysaccharides, which are found in the squash, have also been shown in studies to improve the glucose tolerance and insulin sensitivity, and of course, lower serum glucose levels eventually. Although there has been not a ton of human research, but as far as we know, a lot of uh, animal studies show that squash actually can reduce your blood sugar levels relatively quickly. Now, bitter melon is one of those that we use in our supplements, which has the most highest potency in a concentrated form. No wonder why we put it in our supplement there. Now, more human studies are needed to confirm that, but again, I would say squash is a safe bet for diabetics to get their blood sugar down. Now, Shirataki noodles are next. Shirataki noodles are pretty excellent for diabetes and weight loss. Why? Well, because these noodles are high in something called glucomannan. Glucomannan is a fiber derived from a konjac root. We have other videos about this as well if you want to go back. But this plant is basically grown in Japan and processed into something called shirataki. It can be noodles or rice. And like we said, the glucomannan that's uh, present in there is a, it's a viscous fiber that makes you feel full and satisfied. Now, in addition to that, it has been shown to lower your blood sugar levels drastically after eating that and improve your risk factor for heart disease, especially if you have diabetes or prediabetes or insulin resistance. Now, they did a study for that as well. Now, the glucomannan, for example, significantly decreased the fasting glucose, serum insulin, and cholesterol levels in diabetic rats. Shirataki needles contain only three grams of digestible carbs and 10 calories per 100 gram serving. These noodles typically packed with fishy smelling liquid. Some people don't like that, but they must be thoroughly rinsed before the use and you will be okay, I promise. The noodles should then be cooked for several minutes, uh, typically in a skillet over high heat and so forth uh, without any added fat to achieve that noodle-like texture if you're into pasta and so forth. Well, there you have it, my friend. I kind of came up with the 16 great foods that you should at least try. Uh, look up some recipes and so forth. And 
get it in place, get it in your diet. I think you will love it. Again, check out our website at sugarmds.com for more information and resources. And guess what? Subscribe because you don't want to miss my next video. Hey guys, I hope you are enjoying this channel so far and I hope you subscribed already. If you didn't, do it. And if you did, watch this video right there. I think that will help you too.